Mam zip do dyby. Yes, visible. Just make it full screen. हेलो संदीप हेलो यार वी आर गुड गुड टू सी यू आफ्टर सच ए लॉन्ग ओके माय इंडियन स्टार ना इस शेयर द लाइट्स मैम इज इट नॉट विजिबल नो Okay, ma'am. Ma'am, should I start? Yeah, yeah, please. Uh, yeah. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, the topic of my today's presentation is a multi-units approach to explore novel therapeutic and energy compound production from indigenous cyanobacteria. Uh, I have divided my thesis in uh, five chapters, and I will be going accordingly. Uh, so considering uh, like cyanobacteria these are one of the most primitive prokaryotic organisms that are capable of uh, doing photosynthesis and in that case uh, we know that they have played uh, two major uh, significant roles in the evolutionary history one is uh, through endosymbiosis they are the present precursor of the present day uh, photosynthetic apparatus of all the higher plants and thus contributed significantly in the production primary production of the entire ecosystem and secondly as the uh, major uh, contributor uh, because they are photosynth they were photosynthesizing they uh, release oxygen in this uh, uh, atmosphere so they make the earth habitable for other organisms but uh, the question is that we know that uh, the cyanobacteria are present in this uh, planet from more than 3 billion years ago but why they are still relevant uh, to do work on so what makes them uh, an important uh, Uh, factor or important uh, player for uh, doing research is their range of application potential and also because of this long evolutionary history they have uh, tolerated a number of uh, stress conditions and starting varying from uh, different habitats and that made them habitable in all the extreme conditions and also for the uh, novel secondary metabolites and some toxins they produce Uh, so here are the images of some microscopic images of our in-house cyanobacteria that shows the molly uh, the morphological diversity that cyanobacteria holds and it also forms a uh, later stage the classic uh, criteria of a uh, classification of the cyanobacteria for our uh, uh, work i have uh, mainly worked on two experimental organisms the first one mastigocladus laminosus uu774 which has been isolated from an hot spring of odisha taftapani uh, yes yes ma'am uh, your slides are not moving first of all second it's not showing in the slide show mode uh, can you make it a slide show it is like regular yes ma'am yes ma'am No, I'll I'll probably. If you want, we can uh, share from here. If you want, we have. Mm. Ma'am, I will uh, try one and. Yeah, if it is not working, let us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ma'am, is it full screen now or? Yeah, full screen. This is fine. And it is moving. Yes. 
so as I was talking about that uh, mastoplatus laminosus mu seven seven four and Ostelopsis prolifica, we given we have given the strain name as IICB one. So these two are uh, my experimental organisms, isolated one from an hot spring of Odisha and the other one from the southern uh, part of uh, uh, this country. So uh, both of them are actually filamentous and uh, belong in as per the classical, uh, 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 I mean the traditional classification system that I was referring to, which is based on the morphological uh, features. Uh, this belong to section five or considered as the most advanced one, which is multicellular filamentous and also uh, has uh, true branching uh, filaments in their uh, structure. So this classification, though uh, still now has been widely used, refers uh, ref and it reflects uh, the type of morphological diversity it holds, but it also offers a lot of complications in it. Uh, as an example, when I joined PhD, uh, the Masticoclatus laminosus was belonging to order Stegonimatalis. But within uh, my PhD tenure, it got uh, it was shifted uh, from Stegonimatalis to the order Nostocalis. The reason being, the Stegonimatalis member have the primary branch which is multicerite and also the filaments are also multicerite but for hapalosiphonesi members under the order nostrocalus only the primary branch are multicerite the filaments are uh, should be unicerite which is exactly the case with both of our organisms uh, along with mastocladus and mastigocladus there are uh, five more members of hapalosiphonesi for which genome sequencing has been done and other than the morphological complexity it has has uh, the long evolutionary history. There are several independent events of loss or gain of morphological characteristics that are existing. Uh, there was a need for an polyphasic classification was realized. Uh, how However, for our uh, organisms, we uh, are also get interested in three major application potential of cyanobacteria. The first one being them as very few organisms which can actually fix nitrogen from atmosphere. Thus, they can be useful as a green manure or a uh, natural uh, fertilizers for the agricultural field. Anabina azola is a com very common example of that. And for the nitrogen fixation, they have a specialized cell structure known as heterocyst. The second potential is uh, the or as their potential of alternate bioenergy sources because of their simple structure. And the third one is definitely as uh, producing uh, several uh, compounds of pharmaceutical importance uh, through the mode of NRPSPKs, non-ribosomal uh, peptide synthesis and polyketide synthesis pathway. What is uh, interesting in that, that this is bypasses the traditional ribosomal translation pathway. Uh, therefore, it offers uh, an uh, potential of incorporating as many as 300 proteogenic and non proteogenic amino acids in compared to not only restricting to the only 20 or 22 uh, proteogenic uh, amino acids in terms of the ribosomal synthesis pathway. Therefore, it offers a range of uh, secondary metabolites with uh, our pharmaceutical importance. For our study, we have taken a bottom up approach to genomics and transcriptomics because of the lowering cost of sequencing and the development of NGS techniques. Uh, getting a genome sequenced has become easier and it also offers some uh, opportunities uh, such as the indicative prediction and give us a holistic view and also uh, can generate multiple leads from the subsequent experiments. And also the dry lab work uh, helped us to reduce uh, the time, resource and the cost uh, needed for uh, validating each through without going into the genomic details at first. So this is also considered. So for my second chapter, I work in to, for the genomic and the transcript uh, and the taxonomic position of these two uh, bacteria. So genome sequencing and genome assembly being the first step of this bottom up approach because this is the starting point from where the subsequent experiments will be designed. So, ensuring quality and completeness were quite essential for that. The unavailability of any reference genome uh, made us uh, to go for a de novo assembly approach. And uh, we have used uh, both shorter and longer reads generated from Illumina sequencing to assemble the Westerlopsis prolifica. The only Illumina reads were sufficient to generate a good enough assembly with 29 scaffolds and 99.76% completeness. 
but whereas uh, only illumina reeds were not uh, enough to generate a good assembly for other uh, organism which was mastigocladus laminosus u774 for this we have standardized uh, the oxford nanopore sequencing protocol in our lab in house and we have incorporated the nanopore reeds generated uh, in house with the illumina reeds we have outsourced to do an hybrid assembly uh here this is just a brief statistics of uh, not only mastigocladus but few other cyanobacteria for which i have uh, standardized the oxford nanopore sequencing protocol and also one fungus for which this protocol has been established uh interestingly for mastigocladus the completeness has been significantly improved from 65% to 99.5% so uh, we cannot deny uh, the uh, advantages of oxford nanopore sequencing that it is real time affordable a faster preparation time and generate very longer reads but whether i have encountered several challenges while establishing i find it uh, useful to be mentioned here the one is being a developing chemistry uh, the uh, being a developing uh, techniques the choice of chemistry is still uh, a bit of confusion between lsk 108 and 208 the longevity of pores is a serious issue because after After two months, we literally found the number of available pores coming reduced to only 20%. The starting material, as prescribed in the protocols, there uh, we should at least we have, each time we are doing this, we have to start at least five to uh, six times more uh, amount of starting material because a huge amount of uh, DNA losses takes place in the subsequent steps. And of course, depending upon whether one is uh, interested in just identifying an organism or going for the whole. genome sequencing it will uh, depend on whether one can go for ligation or rapid sequencing however the whole genome sequencing generated a uh, uh, assembly with 53 scaffolds uh, will come to it later uh, the interesting fact is the hybrid assembly uh, generated a 99.5% complete uh, genome uh, the most complete genome available for this organism so far and another interesting feature i would like to highlight is uh, there are still one fourth of the proteins of the total genes predicted are considered as hypothetical proteins again highlighting the need of the exploratory approach for this uh, unexplored organism as well however out of these 53 scaffolds that was generated from genbank while we go into further details to uh, ani and tetranucleotide abundance heat map we find there are several scaffolds that are not matching at all with the rest of the sequences we have highlighted few like the green one the scaffold 20 it was actually find out to be a bacterial contaminant Uh, that somehow bypassed the filtering uh, capability of the gene bank, and we have dropped it from the sequences. The other five are found to be of uh, annotated as plasmid, and the uh, yellow one is uh, the scaffold 13. Uh, do have very less uh, identity with uh, rest of the scaffolds, but we found it also and has 90% of the genes are annotated as hypothetical proteins. But we also found some important uh, and indispensable characters such as thermotolerant DNA. polymer is associated with it and in the later transcriptomic analysis also we found these uh, few of the genes are co transcribed uh, considering it as an unique but an indispensable scaffold data so finally from 53 we came down to 52 scaffolds of which 47 are genomic and 5 are plasmid scaffolds we go for uh, what are the available genomes for these haplocyphonacy family members most of these are comprising of uh, fisherella species isolated from yellowstone uh, national park and another hotspot and the selection criteria was taken as for those genomes of draft genome which has completeness over uh, 90% and contamination less than 5% so there is only single complete genome available rest 44 are draft genome we can see that uh, the genome ranges uh, for westernosis and 74 are around 7 kb uh, another thing is it has an higher amount of crispr and cas elements present in the genome that indicating uh, their adaptable feature as well uh, while considering the cog functional categories of haplocyphonacy member i would like to uh, the one thing is obviously the gc content was very low uh, for any hot spring species that will have uh, further implications on our uh, uh, subsequent analysis and in the cog functional category we find over representation of categories that are responsible for genome plasticity such as here x that is uh, the mobilome prophase and transposomes and the second one is what is uh, considered as an effect of the stress response behavior of this organism such as secondary metabolite biosynthesis or the transport catabolism is stress and these are true for not only our organism that is mastigocladus laminosus 
but also another thermosphere uh, organism, Fischerella species 9339, which have a high number of uh, these uh, mobile elements and uh, present in their genome uh, while considering the fog category. The same thing is again reflected while we uh, go for the mobile element uh, searches across the genome. Here it is mentioned and uh, thus uh, it uh, denotes uh, as the defense mechanism and the adaptive machinery uh, which determines the direction of uh, microevolutionary process uh, that is guided by the number of mobile elements present uh, showing the adaptability of the genome. Uh, we did an uh, in-depth comparison among these three, UU774 and PCC9339, and along with we have also taken the single uh, complete genome of this family available in GenBank. Again, we find that 9339 has the largest genome, the highest uh, mobilome, uh, highest category of uh, profiles and uh, mobile elements and IS elements also. We also found that there is probably a transpose-mediated genome expansion that happens. Other than the genomic similarity, we have found that the predicted biosynthetic gene clusters present in 9339 are also similar to UU775, uh, highlighting that despite they are uh, at present, they are uh, highly separated geographically, but they share some common ancestry. This fact is also been proven by when we design a phylogen, when we create a phylogenomic tree uh, considering all the Apollocyphonetic members, we found that Maxibucladus and 9339 shares a common ancestry. And this is uh, so far all the trees available were based on only 16S RRNA. This is one of the, this is going beyond this and one of the phylogenomic approach uh, that was needed. Uh, coming to the next chapter, we uh, highlighted about the stress response behavior of these two organisms with respect to different external stimulus. Though this is a very basic diagram, but I will be repeating this again and again uh, in my subsequent uh, chapters. So why we choose nitrogen is uh, number one is because it has an impossibility of fixing nitrogen and second is there is a lot of literature available which talks about nitrogen as the lipid trigger. So this uh, made us uh, realize uh, the nitrogen as one of the stress responding behavior uh, while considering the transcriptome. And of course, being a thermostable organism, being an organism isolated from a hot spring, we go for the heat shock uh, response of this organism in six hour and 24 hour time points. The time points are the days, day zero, I mean, uh, six hours after inoculation, and day 12 were determined based on some uh, primary uh, experiments, depending upon the change of pH in media, the crude lipid percentage, and the biomass growth that will be discussed in chapter 5. For now, we have considered it that three days that what is happening when the cells are undergoing nutrient stress when they are growing for 12 days, and what is the difference between presence and absence of nitrogen on their transcriptomic profile. Surprisingly, we found that though these organisms are being maintained in laboratory conditions after extraction for more than three years, we found there are very few transcripts that are actually perturbed in the heat shock condition. Even some transcripts that are perturbed in six hours came back to the original transcription level after 24 hours. Uh, while on the other hand, uh, the differentially expressed transcripts were much higher while the uh, cells are undergoing nitrogen and nutrient stress highlighting that uh, this organism is somehow constitutively expressing all the genes related for maintaining of the heat shock condition. We found few of them, such as degradation of metal, uh, of uh, damaged metalloproteases and uh, some thermotolerant polymerase are there. So uh, the validating this, uh, the RT-PCR was a very commonly used protocol, but we have found a lot of challenges while doing or establishing a base, uh, and set up a protocol for this basic extraction also. The challenges are coming from the first thing being, uh, it's uh, something of the first of its kind. There is no known endogenous control as it can be very commonly seen in case of uh, animal or human cells like the beta actin. And also the intrinsic property that the GC content is only 40% make it more difficult to design primers while we uh, just even looking for the segments which has more than 50% GC content become a challenge. A massive mucilaginous polysaccharide and high photosynthetic pigment also hampers uh, the purification and uh, because uh, so we uh, took a lot of trial and error method to establish the modified CTAB method where the choice of extraction buffer uh, is finally yielded the result that we are uh, looking for. Uh, so after that, the validation is there. So I just like to quickly mention that the right side bars are the log to fold expression level uh, that are predicted from the transcriptome analysis. And the left side is uh, the RT-PCR value of these same transcripts. 
uh, though there might be changes in terms of log to fold change, but the trend is similar that whether it uh, transcript is upregulated or downregulated in this condition. So this is the code transcribed transcripts of the scaffold 38, which uh, earlier considered as one of the unique but indispensable scaffold of this genome. And say K1, one of the protein translocase, uh, has been considered as the internal reference for all these three stress tolerant because uh, expression of these gene has been showing and constituting expression throughout. Uh, while uh, summarizing all the uh, stress response behavior of uh, UU774 to the external nitrogen sources, we found that in turn uh, the uh, absence, uh, the presence of external nitrogen acts as a uh, reduce uh, as a mechanism that reduces fitness of this organism. The nitrogen fixing ability is found to be very intrinsically linked with all other uh, physiological parameters such as photosynthesis, carbon metabolism. Here you can see that in N minus condition, the red arrows are up, indicating the upregulation or elevation of uh, features such as biofilm mechanism formation, correlation inhibition, cell division and also uh, the uh, photosynthetic uh, ability and uh, the protease and defector genes these are all upregulated showing uh, somehow the presence of, of this somehow this organism which is heterocystis has already has an intrinsic machinery to up uh, to fix nitrogen from atmosphere when we are growing them under external nitrogen stress this in turn uh, creates not any added advantage but a reduced fitness for this organism here also, uh, this is also find uh, very clearly uh, when we uh, counted the number of uh, heterosis frequency in individual filaments and we also found the longer filaments length in N minus. Before going into details, I would like to highlight in one of the regulatory interaction during the heterosis development, when the nitrogen limitation in terms act the global nitrogen regulator in PCA, which in a cascade of effect uh, in turn induces the heterosis X differentiation uh, regulator K. Hetar is a transcription factor that autoregulates and dimerize to uh, actually activate other genes needed for heterosis differentiation. But these are two, uh, there are two genes, patase and hetin, that uh, imparted, uh, that regulates the expression of hetar, which is general in the case of the model organism Nostoc, which we can find there is a uh, characteristics ERGSGR region present in this uh, hetin and patase that is once uh, an heterocyst is differentiated from a vegetative cell it helps to maintain the pattern and the pattern is established that means once a heterocyst is formed from a vegetative cell it will not form heterocyst again in the subsequent cells but from the uh, genome of uu774 we find uh, that uh, there is no patase uh, present in this genome and also this motif is being uh, mutated uh, from ergsgr to DQ GNGH and the loss of this motif and absence of patterns is actually in turn uh, reflected in a while uh, we found that this pattern establishment uh, is not there we found two subsequent heterocysts as can be seen in this microscopic picture and also this is uh, something highlighting what is happening when the cells are growing in in minus condition compared to n plus whether these are upregulated or not we found all the global nitrogen regulated genes and the heterocyst differentiation genes are upregulated in cells when they are growing under nitrogen stress uh, under not nitrogen stress under uh, without nitrogen media that is very uh, relatable because when you don't have any nitrogen nitrate source in the media you have to kick start your uh, nitrogen fixation machinery from the very early and also the biofilm production is also there that creates a thick polysaccharide layer outside uh, summarizing the stress response behavior of this organism we found that the heat resistant ability is maintained after even after prolonged maintenance and the presence of external nitrogen sources reduces fitness of this heterocystis cyanobacteria. Here it is a uh, representation like the middle one, the yellow one is uh, the default parameter when cells are growing in N minus condition, day zero, that is the day of inoculation and 25 degree temperature. If we can consider this as a scale, so the more we move towards the extent, the color intensity increases and also the number of uh, part of transcripts are more. 
like we uh, can see that whatever changes are there in between uh, bg11 in minus uh, growing in 25 degree and 50 degree it uh, there though there are some amount of perturbation can be noticed but it came back again uh, to close to this previous position after 24 hour this also highlights because we have already studied the very uh, short term heat shock uh, response of this organism probably a long term treatment is uh, required to understand the mechanism better but while in nutrient stress the number of perturbed transcripts are actually highest uh, uh, indicating a lot of changes are ongoing when the cells are undergoing nutrient stress compared to uh, the heat shock or the nitrogen we have done a similar experiments on uh, the vesiloxis prolifica here the time point is different uh, day 3 and day 9 comprising a four way classification for four way comparison we found that when the cells uh, the, the difference is when the cells are growing in n minus between third day and ninth day when there is only depletion of nutrient the number of perturbed transcripts are lesser compared to when the cells are undergoing an uh, stress for in presence of nitrogen and when uh, the synergistic effect is uh, uh, can be seen as when they are growing the cells are growing for 9 days and the compared when we compared with nitrogen and without nitrogen we can see that with nitrogen that means that though there are uh, nitrate present in the media in the initial days but at the ninth days the nitrogen get depleted and also it is undergoing nutrient stress so in combined effect most number of transcript perturbation is can be seen here also i have uh, made uh, circles for all the four categories and what is happening in terms of these particular transcript related to fatty acid metabolism or nitrogen metabolism and what is happening as example it is very uh, common and expected that while considered in in minus condition compared to in plus irrespective of third and ninth day the nitrogen metabolism related genes are up regulated because while the cells are growing in in minus condition they need to kick start the nitrogen metabolism rd in the stage the global nitrogen regulator in turn is down regulated in n minus condition uh, but up regulated in a later stage of n plus condition regard uh, it is very uh, going well with the fact that when the cells are growing in n plus initially they don't need uh, to motivate or to start their uh, nitrogen fixing capacity Uh, summarizing this, we found there are export of bacteriocin and the NRPS PKs at a late stage. The cultures grown in in minus stresses. Uh, the late activation, as I mentioned, and safeguarding nitrogen metabolism remains the priority for seven seven four as well as the vestal offices. Uh, together, uh, the general observations I have already mentioned that heterocyst cyanobacteria they don't actually consider the absence of nitrogen as a stress condition. Rather than in presence of nitrogen, their fitness reduces in terms of photosynthetic efficiency, cell damage repair, cell growth, and coat repeat production. It has a wider application because in most of the chemical fertilizers that we use are considered uh, they composed of high concentration of nitrate salts, and that has already found to shift the uh, uh, default uh, NPK ratio of the soil from 4 is to 2 is to 1 to 7 is to 2 is to 1. That means that the soil uh, cyanobacteria present in the soil are actually reducing their fitness, which in turn otherwise can help uh, to be acted as biological fertilizer. We will go for the exploration of therapeutic product formation in this experimental organism. These are very pilot level basic experiments we did from the food antibacterial for the food extracts of these two organisms against one gram negative and one gram positive bacteria. We find that in most of the cases, uh, the methanol, butanol, and acetone extracts have an impact, uh, some kind of antibacterial uh, property. But because this is being very crude uh, extracts, we uh, need to go deeper into what actually uh, the what is the exact antimicrobial uh, component that is responsible for showing this activity uh, i mentioned about the uh, importance of nrps and pks in there we try to explore this from the genomes that we have and we have found that there are 22 biosynthetic gene clusters present in both the organisms how biosynthetic gene clusters are not only the genes that are responsible for secondary metabolite production but also includes the regulatory component of it the interesting part is 
out of these 22 even less than 50 percent has a known uh, antimicrobial or a known secondary metabolite identification that again needs how unexplored these fields are and the need for characterization and identification of the secondary metabolites being produced by them uh, shinori deserves a special mention this is one of the query sequence from the uu774 which has a hundred percent sequence similarity which that of pcc9339 again corroborating the fact that these two shares are common ancestry as shown for the phylogenomics approach uh, these, I have listed some of the uh, secondary metabolites found in these two organisms and most of them has antifungal or antibacterial property. Uh, here we also like to uh, see uh, for the specifically the transcript and their expression in the other stress condition. And we found that in the nutrients, most of the secondary metabolite producing transcripts are perturbed and are significantly upregulated uh, compared to the 0th day condition to 12th day condition. And they are present in multiple copies in the genome. These have two implications. One, there is a very serious bottleneck that comes forward when we uh, talk about extracting secondary metabolic production from this cyanobacteria because of the slow growth rate. So uh, this uh, upregulation of production of secondary metabolites can be explored while extracting. I mean, the later day point can be kept in mind while extracting the secondary metabolites. The general observations of the multiple copies in this genome are reflecting that uh, they didn't uh, want to maintain, uh, they didn't want to minimize the pool, but want to keep the pool as wide as possible for all the kind of uh, unfavorable conditions that they can encounter. And the expression level is not affected by nitrogen availability, but this food extraction could be linked with nutrient stress. Uh, whether uh, the presence of around 50% unexplored genome open up several opportunities of discovering new metabolites, but it also has certain limitations. Uh, barring the growth rate and highly skewed research toward microcystin, which is a hepatotoxic uh, cyanotoxin, the standardization of protocol and experimental validation will definitely need a lot of time, resource, and expertise to be standardized. Coming to the last chapter, where we explored whether the organisms are suitable for energy compound production or not, uh, the need of uh, finding an alternative was uh, uh, realized before. And the cyanobacteria, because they don't compete with the food crops, neither compete with the uh, soil, agricultural soil to grow them. The third and fourth generation biofilms are comprising of the cyanobacteria and microalgae. So these are some of the uh, interests that we have started exploring their uh, biofilm production potential of cyanobacteria. And these are view of the basic uh, microscopic uh, pictures of this organism, 74, which has a characteristic cyan blue color, which is missing in a virtual office, but it appears as a beaded experience that clearly demarcates it from the uh, 74. Uh, these are some of the physiological parameters based on which we have decided our uh, time points for uh, not only the transcriptomic analysis, but also the liquid extraction. We have found that though we started with a near neutral pH of 7.2 for both these organisms, the uh, uh, cyanobacteria, they like to maintain a pH of 8 to 10 uh, after a few days of growth. And we also encountered a problem of uh, uh, finding an exact growth curve because of the complex structure, they are not been counted by hemocytometers, nor the chlorophyll content was uh, showing a very constant result. The biomass could be uh, actually uh, indicative of the doubling time. We find that uh, 74, for 74, the doubling time is nearly uh, 12 days. And that is uh, nine for the uh, Wetzlaffsis condition. And also the pH uh, tries to maintain at a range of nine, eight to nine. Uh, we also did crude lipid percentage, crude lipid extraction in different day points. We find uh, specific peaks at these days that help us to determine the time point. Another thing uh, worthy of mentioning here that this is the crude lipid percentage in terms of the total bio weight. We find that though this is a bit higher in case of N minus for both the cases of Westerlophis and Mastigocladus, but still at the highest level, it is only 14% of the total biomass or 10% of the total biomass, which is very less compared to the most extensively used taxa for uh, biofuel production. That is a limitation that we have uh, reported here. It has a relatively slower growth rate, biomass production, and this could be, I have already thought about this. Uh, so these uh, pilot experiments help us to design or to choose for the 
basic uh, timeline or the day points, time points for uh, GCMS as well as the transcriptomic analysis. We have standardized again a lipid extraction uh, protocol for this cyanobacteria by a modified blind dye method. We extracted the crude lipids from it, converted it to fatty acid methyl ester uh, using acid hydrolysis, and then uh, did a GCMS analysis to look at what are all the, the fatty acids that are present in these organisms. We find uh, certain characteristics are, uh, can be find that there is no major fatty acid which has a chain length higher than 18 carbon. All of them are simple and unbranched fatty acid corroborating well the fact that these are very primitive organisms. And though we thought and there is a lot of uh, mentioning in the reports that uh, nitrogen acts as a uh, lipid trigger, but we didn't find any significant change in the amount of lipid production between N plus and N minus condition. Uh, these are all the things that I have just told. And uh, similarly, as expected, uh, though we uh, go into details into the uh, related uh, fatty acid related transcripts from the genome, uh, barring one single ligase that is helpful for increasing membrane permeability, none of the transcripts have shown any significant perturbation in terms of nutrient or effect of nitrogen. Uh, so the general observation from this is uh, this definitely has a lower bioenergy content that made this not a uh, very suitable uh, potential uh, candidate for isolation of biofilm. The slower growth rate is can be acted as an impedant and probably the engineering approach could be followed to overcome the challenges that we have. However, this fatty acid can be very well used as a chemotaxonomic marker for identifying this species. Uh, summarizing the thesis work here, uh, I have uh, sequenced the two experimental organisms uh, using the next generation sequencing techniques. And in all the stages of this uh, thesis, we have to standardize many cyanobacteria specific protocol, starting from as basic as uh, extraction of DNA to modified uh, CTAB method for RNA extraction, the fatty acid extraction, and also the uh, definitely the standardizing of the Oxford nanopore sequencing protocol. We have done a comparative analysis of all the hepalosiphonacy members uh, available there and build a phylogenomic uh, tree uh, beyond the six. RNA, sorry for the uh, typing mistake here. Uh, the nutrient and nitrogen stress responsive behavior of these two heterocyst cyanobacteria has been studied, and we found that the presence of external nitrogen for heterocyst cyanobacteria did reduce their fitness. Uh, uh, they, we have also explored the potential therapeutic compound potential and their suitability as a biofuel uh, production material uh, from this. Uh, these are a uh, few of the publications where I have co-authored and uh, uh, one of them is, is still under preparation. Uh, lastly, I would like to thank uh, the funding agencies, CSIR and DBT for uh, DBT for funding few of the experiments that I have done. I would also like to thank IICB and SCSIR uh, for providing me the opportunity to uh, continue my research. I would like to thank my supervisor, uh, Dr. Suchita Tripathi, for all his guidance and motivation, Dr. Shrutishanjita Behra and my respected DAC members for time to time uh, their uh, useful feedback. I would also like to thank two of my seniors, uh, especially Adit Toda and Shomrada, without whom the bioinformatic analysis could not have been possible by me. Uh, I would also like to thank uh, my juniors and all other lab members. Uh, and uh, thank, hopefully and most probably this is going to be my uh, last academic presentation. Uh, I would like to conclude this with uh, two lines that uh, two roads diverge in a yellow wood. And uh, sorry, I could not travel there, and I have already uh, uh, changed a different field. Uh, thank you. Uh, so now it is open for uh, discussion. Okay, Mayuri. Uh, I have uh, very uh, few questions for you. So first one is, can you justify why you have put up, I mean, the title as multi-omics approach? I mean, what led you to do that? Uh, 
so for this uh, like we have uh, not only looked and into the morphological and physiological parameters but we have included uh, genomics and transcriptomics approach to it we have also started doing uh, and we can manage to do very few metabolomics approach into it and the proteomics approach is need to be done that i could not when i started uh, so uh, this all uh, like looking for this uh, organisms in a multi perspective angle uh, helped me to let uh, i mean and that is why i conceptualized uh, this multi omics approach towards my and another thing is uh, did you uh, submit this uh, to the i mean the geo database because uh, yes, so you have got the GSE number, right? Yeah, yes, sir. Uh, okay. And another thing is, uh, what uh, the manuscript where you have already communicated this thing, did it get published already? Uh, no, ma'am. I uh, you, uh, this actually came back after and then probably. Okay. Another thing is, uh, I was interested just for the last, I mean, the chapter five topic. So. Can you just explain me a little bit regarding the, I mean, the how efficient you can get the uh, biofuel out of the uh, cyanobacteria? How efficient it will be? Ma'am, we started uh, looking for it because it actually has, uh, I mean, there are multiple reports uh, like Nostro, Cannabina, these are uh, went, I mean, very commonly used for biofuel production. But what we found that uh, the biofuel production, as I told in one of these uh, slides, that the content is only 10 to 14 percent. That is very less uh, in compared to other organisms where the liquid content of is uh, it goes around 30 percent of the biomass. So in that cases, that is an impediment uh, for uh, using these as a suitable candidate for biofuel potential. And uh, because we left it in between, because the uh, it, the turnout was not as great as we expected. So this is just a crude liquid extraction that we did there after it needs a lot of experiments to be done uh, for its suitability to be actually used as a in the uh, engines i mean the next and test and all other that are need to be done but we actually uh, have to stop it because the production was not as good as we expected okay okay thank you my uh, that's all that's from all my from side, side. So, is there any other question? Um, Sandeep or Jayati or Sanjay? No, it's a good presentation. Thank you. I don't have any questions. Uh, Hi, Bayati. I'm Sandeep here. Yeah, yes, sir. So, I have just uh, one query. So you uh, did all these experiments, uh, this is a thermophilic organism, and you did all these experiments in uh, single organism mode, okay? I mean, in a, you cultured it in a, uh, I mean, you need a kind of, uh, you just cultured this organism separately, okay? But in a, a natural environment, they actually uh, stay with uh, other cyanobacteria, other bacteria, and other things, mostly in uh, uh, hyperthermophilic conditions. So what do you think? I mean, whatever you have seen at the RNA level, at the lipid level, so what do you think? How much perturbations will be there in natural environment, not in this uh, lab conditions? Sir, I think, uh, I mean, culturing or actually if we can do uh, a real uh, transcriptomic profiling uh, directly from the environmental benefit. Uh, sir, like we have seen that the genomes and uh, genomes are full of, uh, uh, I mean, uh, materials or elements that is required for uh, the cell to cell communication and transfer i have not mentioned about but uh, the genome is full of tcs uh, components two component signaling components and the genes of quorum sensing i feel that is definitely uh, play a great role in interacting with the other metabolites or uh, uh, the other organisms present in this uh, environment and uh, sir, I think it, we will get a much uh, higher uh, number of perturbation if we grow them uh, not separately but uh, as a whole. 
Yes, and I mean, uh, most of these characteristics uh, may be totally different in the community. So, uh, I mean, as you mentioned all about, uh, about the CRISPR cas system, I think it's a class one CRISPR cas system you have found in cyanobacteria. Uh, yes, so this is just, in, I did not go into much more details because. Uh, okay, okay. So there are different classes for the CRISPR cas system. So uh, I think uh, in case of cyanobacteria, mostly class one is there. And um, so, I mean, uh, we uh, are required in order to protect themselves from other viruses and other uh, kind of uh, pathogenic organisms. So, uh, I mean, uh, I think in community, uh, this might be a totally different scenario, okay. And you have mostly nicely depicted that in different conditions, how the uh, different uh, RNA uh, level and the uh, lipid level, how uh, uh, different things are coming out. But uh, maybe in natural conditions, we don't know. I mean, we still cannot do this thing in labs, but some other thing may occur. But it's a very nice job you did and nice presentation. Thank you. And Sandeep, I want to add here that we still have some bacteria growing along. They don't go away. <laughs> and we accidentally sequence some of their uh, gen genomes also. Oh, that means uh, you, uh, you told about the contamination. So that is already there in that file. Okay. They are still there. They are not going away. Even though we try to get rid of them, they're that's actually there. yeah that may be a good thing i mean for their survival and other thing these bacteria are might be mandatory or something like that so i mean there might be some mutual uh, cooperation is going on mutualism is going on yeah mutually so that's why you ask, yeah that's why you ask this question we have other uh, like uh, we have studied several and uh, one of our uh, former student is there diksha she uh, we could see that there is a bacterial association so she studied another organism. So this is there. And then we, to our surprise, we found that there is a scaffold which contains genes of assorted origin, like some of bacteriophages, some are from plasmids, some are from some other unknown sources. So these are like some something is going on. It has been picking up genes as it goes. Uh, so it looks like that. So that is a very interesting study and that's what we over speculated and we said it to some journals and they said you are speculating too much <laughs> so we are now toning down our speculations and sending it again to some other journal because our findings are very interesting but uh, we have to prove it whatever we are saying so. yes yes so there might be a symbiotic effect between the two i think so yeah, not only one organism. Exactly, that might be mm -hmm. happening there. Yeah. There are actually multiple organisms in nature. They occur together and they don't like to be separated. Since we are providing them all the food they want, they are probably existing, but they would not like to be like this. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly. why we are looking out at all the natural, but we try to see that what is actually what makes this organism so resistant to heat. Even after so many years, I think this was isolated in 1977, before most of the people in this room born. Uh, but uh, you know that uh, organism is still heat tolerant. If we keep it uh, in the heat, it survives. Uh, so that means it has retained most of its ability to survive. That's very interesting. Okay, that's a good presentation, Mayuri. Uh, so, if there are no other questions, uh, Sanjay, anything else uh, we need to do, or we can straight away say that Mayuri has passed her thesis papers. So, normally, we like to ask, like, there are certain questions raised by the reviewers, and uh, certain things are to be asked and it is given by those uh, so if those are kind of okay uh, then I, I think we are all fine so um, and i think uh, if there is no other question we can congratulate Moiri. and uh, thank you for to both of you uh, congratulations to both Moiri and Sujitaji. so and if the death members agree then we can actually 
हम बस देते हैं मैं बोल रही हूँ एंड and congratulations to sanjay da also for conducting it so nicely so thank you for yes. seeing sundi after a long time to yes. yeah. <laughs> meetings right and actually i would like to thank our external examiner professor jhumur ghosh and thank you very much for attending this uh, this is events with your precious time yeah jhumur ji i think you can recognize me जॉब so with this i would really like to um thank all of you and congratulate myri for uh, being awarded thesis from acsr from now onwards we'll call you dr myri <laughs> and congratulation to you also sujit abhi thank you so much thank you thank you very much so later on you get that thing signed actually the document yeah i will send out the form yeah i will i will fill it up i have already the print out so i will fill it up and i will send it to you thank you sandi thank you so much as a that member you are very far away now although in kolkata yeah can you any things and other thing right <laughs> So, I didn't expect you will be here, but it was really nice of you to show up and take your yeah. time. Only so at least you can yeah, show no your problem. face. We haven't seen you so much for long. Yeah, show your face. <laughs> uh, no, I'm not showing my face <laughs> because I'm outside now. That's why. Okay, okay, great. So thank not you. Not so bad, right now. Yeah, okay. thank you. Yeah, don't worry. Thank you so much, everyone. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to now hang up. Okay? Yeah, yeah, sure. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Ghosh. Yeah, thank you once again. Congratulations, uh, Mayuri and Shuchita Di. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Shuchita Di, I will be emailing you the documents. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Bye. Diksha, don't go away. How are you? Hello, ma'am. I'm good. You're good. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, so how is everything going on? Um, <laughs> it's fine, ma'am. Actually, I had some uh, health issues after delivery, so I'm coping okay. with that. But as such, not a lot. So I'm, I'm I've started writing proposal. Uh, for post doc yeah, uh, we are actually we have not sent all the papers for a reason and uh, subhajit is still working on your paper because we found some dna sequences and so so probably subhajit will have to do and while you are still working on your paper because <laughs> i have to make sure that it is liked by the journals because the journals are not liking it in the present form ma'am if there is anything which i can do then uh, I will. No, we are discussing. Actually, you know, your genome was having so many things, so we had to uh, now re-sequence it because I want to make sure that what we are saying as LK is actually LK. LK is like 99 percent similar to Lindia or Leptolindia. Yes, Leptolindia or whatever is there submitted from our lab. So either that is LK or this is Lindia. So, in order to rule out that possibility, once we publish, we publish. But that before that, we need to really confirm. So, thanks to Subhajit for uh, stopping me <laughs> from going further. So that yeah, uh, Subhajit actually talked to me about this, and uh, he also told that he got some interesting things like what you mentioned uh, here uh, about the. Uh, Uh, yeah we are splitting that paper anyway into two but i think it will add more value if we put some more experiments in it which he is doing anyways building uh, so let's see it will come out 
Okay, now if this is Mayuri's day, let us uh, yeah. see. <laughs> Done. Congratulations, Mayuri. Yeah, congratulations. You don't look happy. No, I thought it will continue for some time more. I, I didn't expect to such a... You had six slides. I was thinking it will take long. Ever, but no, you just completed. I don't know how. <laughs> and even I forgot to print your external questions. And I was quiet when you said. Then I have to search now. That's it. And I should have shared it with you. External, we ask some questions. So yes, ma'am. These uh, are basic, like what is in for the Yeah, that is true. But you know, that is the procedure. Okay. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, okay. but Jhumur should have asked, but uh, I, I don't know, she didn't ask anyway. Jhumur, ma'am, gave only these two questions in the review report. Yeah, there was another uh, review, external review. He yeah. also asked some yeah, He asked three more questions. Yeah, that question I should have printed and asked you. But then I don't. <laughs> okay, you would want to say anything to help you in the monologue. Really good to see you after such a long time. And now I hope we can take some rest. Mm -hmm. And it must have been really tiring for you. Anxious day for you. Mom, did it went well? It went really well. And you you were continuously speaking. You are not uh, interrupted. I think you prepared well. Bro. I prepared well. Yes. That's why it went well. And you presented that uh, latest paper. Although I was thinking that you have done so many things. It's okay. It's fine. Okay, so we can take a group picture with Mahi. Yeah. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Just take a group picture of Mahi. We'll take it. Now, who will take a picture? I cannot see you. Now. You can see us, but we can see you. We can switch on the video. No, Acha, we have to take the no, I'm not going to be